Praise the Lord. Praise Him. Praise the Lord. Praise Him. Bless the Lord. Um, I had a question. I have to write it down. Okay, so coming from Sunday church, um, I've seen and been a part of, you know, worshiping and praying and shouting and doing all of these things in the name of the Lord. Yes. Um, but my question is, being that, you know, it's not the Sabbath or, um, yeah, it's not the Sabbath, would, would they, even though they're still calling on the name of the Lord and they're still doing all of these things in the name of the Lord, are they, um, are they reserved for punishment or um, is God hearing them? You know, because some of them, um, how can I say it? Some of them, they don't know better. You know what I'm saying? Like some don't really know the truth. Like, you know, they're, what, they, they're, being, what they're being taught, they're, they're going with what they're taught. So they don't even really know. So um, would they still be reserved for punishment? Or? Great question. So Chantel, use that mic. And I have, a, sorry, a, a scripture reference that I wanted to add. Yes. Um, I was reading in John 9 where um, John was, um, someone was like casting out demons in the name of the Lord. But um, because that person wasn't with them, he forbade them. But God told them, um, God told John, it's okay because if they're not, um, if they're not against, they're with you. They're with you. So. Just to clear up that scripture, the people were doing it, um, they were not just um, like random no. people. There were still people who were um, commandment. commandment keepers. They were just not That's in the specific company of the called disciples. Okay. okay. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So those, it's just like say, like over there, so no, and um, you, have, you have another commandment keeping church that is do every, doing everything right, but because you're not used to them, you assume that they're right. not. Okay. That is what that context okay. was. That's so right. that's not Sabbath and Sunday. Okay. All right. Moving on, no, where's Sister Chantel? I wanted to, she had her hand up to answer you. Oh. Sister, you You have your hand up? Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Greetings in Jesus' name. Amen. So basically from what I get from your question is, are those who worship on Sunday reserved for punishment? And I was thinking of myself and I was thinking of Sister Melissa, and I was thinking of Sister Clark. I was even thinking of you while you were asking a question. God knows the heart. God sees the sincerity of the heart. And um, for me, it, it comes down as long as you are truly seeking God and truly want to, want to know God for yourself, God will open up your eyes to see the truth in his words. Praise the Lord. Just like God, God showed you and God called you from that into the seventh day, praise the Lord. God will show you. It, it's all for who will accept it. You know, because when everything was given to me, it wasn't just given to me. I took it to my parents. I took it to everybody. But I'm the one who accepted it. Because I, to me, it's like this. It doesn't matter what, what it is. I'm willing to sacrifice it for God. And so God, God saw that even worshiping, I heard somebody say before, when you worship in Sunday, you worship in sincerely, but you're sincerely wrong. But God saw the, the true sincerity in my heart, and he chose to bring, bring us into, into his words, truth. bring us into the truth of his words. Praise the Lord. That's why we're here today. So I'm saying those who are in Sunday and choose not to change, they are reserved for punishment because the Bible says the preaching will be all over. Everybody will get a chance to hear the words, praise the Lord. But it's who will accept it and who will walk in the way. And I, I, just, I just bless the Lord because, you know, for the longest um, with me and Sunday, it, it was a, a really hard fight. And I remember the trips that we would take to Louisiana. And all the time, my, my dad and my mom would be like, when are y'all coming back? And when are y'all doing this? And I need you guys for the church and all this kind of stuff. And my dad was like, oh, we're going to get a, a service on Saturday. And you guys can 
do that service, but we're still gonna have the service done. You know, they, they really don't get it. And I'm so grateful because the last time we went down there to pick up my little cousin, my husband and I never had to say anything. We didn't talk about the Sabbath, we didn't talk about nothing. We just went down there to celebrate my little brother graduating, give my cousin, and we were at my dad's house and my dad cooked his famous ribs. And one person from my dad's church, he said, I have a question, Pastor. You know in the Bible when Jesus rebuked the demons and they went in the swine and went in the water, does that mean we're supposed to be eating this? And my dad said to him, you know, my um, daughter and her husband, they actually followed the Bible's way. And they, they, he went on to talk about the scripture and how you're not supposed to eat this. And I was looking at Rohan like, what is going on? It was such a shock to me. And, he, and he's like, well, if they're following the Bible's way, what, what are we following? <laughs> but they, they, no, but they're still not going to change. They still, not, they still went out there and cracked some ribs and pigtails and everything. Because that's, it's like, this is what we grew up with. This is what we know. And to change, to change from that tradition, it costs everything. Look at the testimony of your life. It costs so much to follow God, but it's worth it. So when you, when God see the sincerity in your heart, even if you're in Sunday, God will mark you out for preservation and he will bring you to his word and he will save you. Praise the Lord. My dad, my dad called me and I know, I said, God, I always pray that we stop hearing, you need to come home. You need to, you need to come, come back to Louisiana. My dad called me this week because we were talking about some situations going on with my little five-year-old cousin. And you know, he said, he said, Shan, I'm so glad you guys moved to Georgia because you're not under, under the mind trap of this family. And I was oh, like, oh my God. I, I, oh no, I'm still in shock because God, God, it's like God just delivered me from, I don't even have to fight that bad anymore. And you know where I come from? I thought it was gonna be, from me, keep talking to them. But they say, oh, I don't, we don't want to hear because you're a troublemaker. You know where, they, where my dad's eyes are really getting to open? Because he sees Samuel on the YouTube playing. He see Gabriel up here talking about the words of God. He hear Michael giving a testimony. Yes, you know. It's the grandchildren oh, who, who they see. Who, who they, my dad say, I can't believe it. I hear, I hear Gabriel give the words of God. I see Samuel. I see Michael giving a testimony. I'm wondering, what, what am I doing? What are we doing? And I'm like, God, even my children you are using to bring the words to them that we don't even have to say anything anymore. So I'm telling you, when you are following God sincerely, God will work it out for you. He'll make a way for you. Even those who are still feeling like you're stuck in Sunday, you're stuck somewhere. Mr. Net, I'm talking to you. Praise his holy name. No matter what the situation may be, be sincere to God. Because as long as you're sincere to God, God will make a way for you to be saved. God will mark you. Praise his holy name for preservation. These are my few words. Praise him. I'm going to stop right there. I know I said you, Sister Clark, but I think she covered it. Yes.